What's up everybody, Superworks fan here for today's Frequently Asked Question video. And uh, today the question is, why don't I own a WRX? If I'm a Subaru WRX fan, why don't I own one? And that's a very reasonable question. Of course, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, I'm just a fan of the WRX. You know, I never claim to be an owner of one, I'm just a Subaru WRX fan. But, um, so I'm gonna just, the short answer is, uh, currently I prefer two-door rear-wheel drive cars. And so I wanna enjoy two-door cars while I can before I have kids and things like that. Um, Cause there'll be, you know, 18 years where I'll be having to drive a four-door car. So I wanna enjoy the coupes while I can. And I don't absolutely need four-wheel drive here in Pittsburgh uh, with the limited amount of snow we get that isn't too bad. Uh, rear-wheel drive with snow tires is totally fine. So that's why I prefer, I've preferred, uh, you know, rear-wheel drive cars uh, for ever since I got the BRZ really. And I just love the tail happy, you know, driftability of the rear-wheel drive cars. But I'm gonna kind of uh, break this down a little bit more into three different parts. First, why I never have owned a WRX in the past, why I don't currently own one, go into that a little bit more, and uh, when I plan to own a WRX in the future. So, um, why I never owned one in the past, you know, because if you watched yesterday's video, then you know that uh, the WRX was always my dream car. That's what I aspired to. That's why I named the channel, um, you know, after that car. Uh, but the way it worked out for me, so my first car was just a hand-me-down given to me by my uh, parents. It was an old 1997 Subaru Impreza Outback Sport that I kept for, uh, I don't know, maybe six or nine months, but it was an automatic and I just couldn't stand it. I wanted a manual and I wanted a WRX. So I was planning on waiting until I was, you know, maybe 18 or so to get one, um, but then uh, it just so happened I worked at a car dealership and they got a 2006 Subaru Legacy GT Spec B in, and I never even really considered owning one because they've always just seemed way more expensive. They were like, you know, $35,000 brand new and that was way out of my budget being a teenager. So I kind of just wrote the car off as uh, something unattainable that I would never plan on owning. But they got this one traded in and uh, it was a 2006. This was in the year 2007. It was a 2006, only had 15,000 miles on it and uh, they only wanted $20,000 for it. Some guy traded it in and definitely did not know the value of his vehicle even though he just paid thirty some thousand dollars for it a year earlier and um but yeah so i was able to pick that up for twenty thousand dollars it was just too good of a deal to pass up and i was like well it's faster than a wx because at that time a wx only had you know 230 horsepower or so the legacy gt had 250 uh, it was also more uh, luxurious and nicer it had the some of the sti bits on it as well um from this you know with the spec b version and i just love the red interior with the silver which is a beautiful car and i still miss that car to this day um so uh you know i was like you know i guess i, I even though i still wanted a wrx i was like this is going to be cheaper it's going to be cheaper to insure most importantly as well because with Legacy, it just came up on the insurance as a standard Legacy. It didn't come up as a GT or a Spec B. So I was getting you know the same cheap rates as all the other grandmas driving around in Legacies. Uh, so that was great versus the WRX, which is sky high insurance uh, rates for most people. So that was a pretty big deal as well. And I figured I was getting a faster, more luxurious car for you know basically the same money I would have paid for a WRX at that point in time because I wanted a 2006 WRX as well, and those would have been you know over twenty thousand dollars too. So. I thought it was a really great deal and uh, so that's why I, I kept that car for about five years and I kept it even after I bought the BRZ. Uh, I kept it for like another year or so but it was only my winter beater at that point and I felt bad just having it sit around as a winter car and you know I was always driving the BRZ instead unless I needed four doors in the rare few instances where I you know was driving people around or whatever. So I sold it uh, to a great guy uh, that's in Florida now and takes really really good care of it. He's a very uh, very cool guy and I'm very happy the car is uh, you know with a good new owner so um, I'm happy about that whole thing but so that's why you know I never went over to a WRX and so that's kind of why I still have not gone over to WRX like I said in the beginning of the video I prefer rear wheel drive and um, you know I prefer two doors and also uh, even if those two things didn't matter to me I just felt like I got more for my money with the Mustang than you do with a WRX for the same price as a WRX uh, yes, you don't get all wheel drive, you don't get four doors, but you do get, um, you know, the really great looks of the Mustang, which I think is obviously, you know, more swoopy and aggressive. Uh, you also get a much more luxurious interior, in my opinion. You get um, obviously more power, even from the factory, 310 horsepower, um, which you can't get even close to that unless you get the STI with its like 305 horsepower. And those go for, um, you know, much more than the EcoBoost do. So um, that was kind of, you know, why I just felt like the Mustang gave me more for my money. And that was another reason why I went with that and why I currently don't own a WRX. 
So the third part of the question of when do I plan on owning a WRX? I do plan on owning one most likely whenever I do need four doors or if I end up moving to a place where I really do need all wheel drive. But most likely it'll just be whenever I need a family car, I need a four door car, I will most likely go with the WRX. I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, I'm planning on waiting at least five years before uh, having kids. But, um, you know, whenever that time comes, we'll just have to see, you know, what the 2020 WRX will be like at that point in time, if that'll be a car that I'll want to own, um, or, you know, if I'll, I mean, there's other competition that's very enticing as well, like the Golf R and GTI and things like that. But I think the WRX has always been the car that I've still really loved and I still kind of want to own eventually. So I think that's probably the most likely time when I'll do it is once I do need four doors um, and I'm, you know, constantly driving around more than one other person, then the WRX uh, will be there, hopefully still on sale and uh, I'll be able to pick one up and um, so that is uh, my game plan as far as you know the WRX and why I don't own one yet but like I said I do plan to own one eventually and I still love them they're still great cars just because I don't own one now doesn't mean that I won't in the future or that I don't like them they're great cars uh, you know mostly pretty reliable I think they look great, even though some people think they're hideous. I think, especially the new ones, they're awesome looking. And uh, overall, it's a great car that I hope to own one day. So hopefully that answers your questions. For those of you that always ask, you know, why do you have a Mustang when your name is Super Dirks Fan? That is why. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you have any additional questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.